Hello, and welcome to the final part in this series of tutorials on feedback, where I've been looking at um, Balloon Typhoon, which is a game that I've made. Uh, I put it out there straight away, so I spent a very short amount of time making it. I published the game and I asked for feedback from the community. And in the last part of this series, part two, uh, I took a look at the feedback from the community and I started looking at how I could address some of the bugs, the issues, and some of the constructive ideas that came out from that feedback round. And it's been really, really exciting to see people playing the game, let alone having such amazing ideas and some great feedback from all, all sorts of different channels. I'm getting from the Discord, from the live stream, and from, from the forum, um, and from Free Feedback Friday, which is a, a voice chat on the Discord where you can play your game with other people and get some feedback on, on improving it. So the feedback has there's been plenty of it. There's been more than I can do before I needed to put this tutorial out. So I've addressed some of it, not all of it. So the things that I've really looked at is the stuff that would either, any, any bugs that were breaking the game, there was a major bug where if two players collided, it duplicated the flag held template, which had lights and effects and all sorts of stuff in it. And it was causing the game to chug and to really slow down because of the sheer amount of uh, GPU intensive things going on and CPU intensive things going on. Um, transforms and all sorts of and lighting and effects and particles, all sorts of stuff. So that bug is definitely fixed. And what's more is I've added, it allowed me to, by fixing that bug, it allowed me to look at how I could also implement, you've just seen it there, the flag being knocked off if you hit the terrain. And this makes it into quite an interesting, slightly different game, just as fun, but it's it becomes a little bit like a thread the needle challenge once you have your flag. I've changed the flags to be ducks, by the way. Um, but once you've got the flag, it's it becomes very, very tricky to navigate back. And that's okay. Uh, it's it can I, the main thing was that it didn't get too frustrating, but I think because the flying the balloon is quite fun, it shouldn't get too frustrating. Hopefully for all my players, uh, but that's again now that I've completed a round of feedback and I've implemented some changes into my game, I've improved it where I can and I've fixed some bugs. It's a good opportunity now to put the game back out to the community and to see what they make of the way that I've addressed their feedback. So when I republish this game, I'll put a shout out on the forum. I'll put a shout out on the Discord game releases channel and also on the looking for feedback channel where I'll talk about, I've made this game again. I've improved this game. Please come and play my game and give me some feedback. And hopefully, just like before, people are more than happy to play a computer game. Shocking, I know. So. There we go. Yes, uh, you can see the lava geezers going up and down. This was a great idea from one member of the uh, the Discord who suggested some lava geezers or a way to change the level while it's playing so that it's not a completely static level. And I loved that idea. So they had to go in. And uh, another thing was Russ mentioned that the game could get quite slow with lots and lots of players, and it could get very, very complex when you've got 12 players. We had 10 players. The level wasn't quite as complex as this, but it was definitely starting to chug and it was quite confusing what was going on. So I've lowered the number of players to a 3v3 and I've addressed Russ's ideas for level design where he suggested if you do a 3v3, you can essentially do three lanes. So we've kind of got three lanes here to get from one side to the other. And I also looked at Adam had this really great idea for sort of risk and reward and that sort of thing. So. Um, I've looked at making some of the lanes more complicated to navigate, some of them easier but take longer, uh, and try to balance it where I can so that players have got choices. They can uh, do things that take skill if they're feeling very skillful, or they can just go the easy route, but the more long-winded route. Uh, and I think it's quite a fun game to play. Um, it's quite challenging, but it's still completely doable. So that's my game, and I will be republishing that and relaunching it. At the end of a round of feedback like this, it's a really good idea to think, to reflect on what I've learned about my game development process and my game design. So 
any kind of feedback is really, really useful for this. But specifically, if you've put a game out there and there's been some major changes, it's worth thinking about how you can make sure that you incorporate those ideas and that knowledge, that learning that you've gained, how you can incorporate that in the future. So for example, with this game, there was a major bug where if two players collided and one of them was holding the flag, the flag duplicated. I learned a lot about the capture the flag mechanics underneath the skin of capture the flag game. And I feel very confident now in making more capture the flag games. Furthermore, I know that I need to test it with multiple people because that was the main reason that that bug uh, was in the game, even on launch day was because I hadn't tested with multiple people or I hadn't tested enough with multiple people. So I'm definitely going to incorporate both of those things into my game practice in the future and into developing games in the future. And so I encourage everyone to think about the feedback, not just in terms of how they're improving this specific game, but also how they can improve as a game developer in the future. And once you've done all of that and you've got your game back out there, you can really choose what you want to do. do you, you can, I could take this and continue working on it and make it better and better and better, more and more polished. Uh, it's still definitely not perfect and there's still plenty more things I can do with it. And it might be quite fun to also see where the community wants to go with, with it from now on. I could add more challenges. I'd like to add a bit more solo adventure in there which would be really fun. Um, but essentially, yeah, I could keep working on this game or I could take what I've learned about balloon games and capture the flag and make a sequel, which is a different theme, but it's a very, very similar concept. And that would be quite fun because it would allow me uh, an opportunity to explore an alternative theme with the same mechanic and see what other kind of level things might come out of that. So for the example, in this level, we have lava geezers. It'd be quite interesting to look at something like a magical uh, castle kind of one where maybe there's something slightly different. There's not lava geezers. There could be, it could be during a, um, an invasion and there's catapult stuff or cannonballs flying everywhere or something like that. So I'd like to look at uh, a sequel to this. I think that'd be really good fun. Or it could be that I just look at more balloon games, more capture the flag games, or none of those things, and still taking what I have learned for about Lua and about Crater and about game design and about the community, I can still take that into other games and explore completely new mechanics, new ideas, and new gameplay thoughts and levels. So that's it for this series on feedback. Uh, I hope you found this whole series quite useful. I really encourage you to get in touch with people in the community, to talk to each other and to help each other learn and develop as gamers and game developers at the same time. And I really look forward to seeing you in Crater.